There is something about Sir George Martin. The fifth Beatle, as he will forever be known, was an integral part in shaping not just the sound of the biggest musical phenomenon in modern history, but also the way music itself is recorded and produced. The hits are too many to mention, as are the studio innovations that revolutionized pop music forever. But less known about Martin is how his working class childhood and his musical influences profoundly shaped not just his career, but that of the Beatles. But now, a new book titled Maximum Volume, The Life of Beatles producer George Martin, the early years, 1926 to 1966, fleshes out Martin and separates fact from myth. Maximum Volume is a fascinating portrait of a defining figure in the history of rock and roll and the genius behind the sound of the Beatles. And joining me now is the author, famed Beatles scholar Ken Womack, also the dean of the Wayne D. McMurray School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Monmouth University in New Jersey, and also a friend. It's good to have you here, Ken. Thanks so much, Jack. We've been talking about this for at least a year or so while, <laughs> this, while this was in the works. <laughs> you talk about how he first meets up with the Beatles. Uh, George wanted nothing to do with them. Um, to his eyes, they did not like, look like the pathway to success. They didn't seem like uh, the kind of guys he could ride uh, to the top of the charts. And that's what he wanted to do. He was blindly ambitious about it. He wanted what he called a fireproof act that he could ride to the top of the charts. Uh, what he really wanted was a Jag. I mean, he wanted a fine car mm -hmm. and social status. Uh, and when he met the Beatles, they did not look like the ticket to him. They, they were from Liverpool. That was everything he was trying to get away from right, right. With, through his social climbing. And it just didn't make sense to him. You talk about the fact that, that they had sort of rejected the Beatles once before, and now they're meeting with them again, and, uh, and they, they kind of walk into the, the, the studio here, and the Beatles bang out some numbers, including some of their own, that, yes. that had become, uh, become iconic since. And they, they have a meeting afterwards. And it, it, I think it's great when you think about what they became, but when you talk, talk a little bit about this meeting you bet. that took place here. It was a, it was a career saving moment, probably uh, in retrospect. George did what he did with lots of acts like that at the time. They only had 90 minute sessions. It was in and out. And he lectured them. He said, you know, you're not playing this well. Put your instrument here. That drumming's not any good. You know, John, you need to sing this way. And he lectures them 20, 30 minutes, and he finally says, well, you know, is there anything you'd like to say for yourselves? And it was George Harrison who stood up and said, well, for starters, I don't like your tie. <laughs> and it was magnificent. George was a man who had made comedy records, and they knew that. And he loved to laugh, and as Paul McCartney says, everybody in Liverpool is a comedian. And there was George Harrison being really cheeky and not even caring about it. And these guys had just gotten reamed out. I mean, literally, he still didn't think he had a great success group on his Oh, hands. not at all. Uh, and George Harrison was 19 when he does this. And, uh, you know, Martin's not used to guys standing up to him, and they're hilarious. He spends 20 minutes just laughing and cutting up with them and his studio personnel. They're just loving it. Martin said he had tears running down his face from laughing so hard. And you wonder if, if George Harrison had not had the, 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 the courage, to some extent, to stand <laughs> up to this guy, yeah, and had the sense of humor to say, all right, in this tense room, I'm gonna say, yeah, I got a problem. I don't like your tie. That's right. And it, would we have ever had the Beatles? It's hard to say. I don't think we have the Beatles if we don't have George Martin. Talk a little bit more about how their relationship evolved and, and some of the innovations that he introduced to their music that, that we now accept as being iconic Beatles music, but came from George Martin. Sure. Um, the key moment for him when he threw his lot in with them was, was later in the year. Uh, they had played a slow version of Please Please Me to him. And uh, he said, well, why haven't you sped this up? Well, they didn't know to speed it up. So they went back to Liverpool, sped the song up, George fell in love with it. Please, 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 yeah, like and that's when he throws his lot in, because they were listening to him. They were funny first, now they're listening to them, so they're teachable. Um, and that teachability, that ability to accept what he had to offer made all the difference. That's why he said, let's make an album, and then later let's make another, and one after another, success after success. And it had to do with that openness they had, because they're from Liverpool and they don't mind working hard. They'll cut up as hard as they, they give, but they want to work hard. 
Um, and in that spirit, George was able to try many innovations with him. For example, the famous wind-up piano. And he called it that because when he would use this methodology, it sounded like an old music box, that bristly sound. And what he would do is he would record a piano solo while recording at half speed. So and he's then, playing the piano. Right. And then he would play it back at full speed, which speeds up the sound and also speeds up the attack of each note. So when you listen to that great uh, piano solo on In My Life, that mm -hmm. precision, that harpsichord sound, comes from VeriSpeed tape recording. And once they saw the window into those places that George was opening for them, it all changed. And that's how we get to, eventually, Revolver and then Sergeant Pepper. And they begin to let their imaginations take over. You talk about seeing the window. This book is a, a just a wonderful window into the creation of a group that we all thought we knew a lot about. And I think when people read this and they see some of the stories and, and and how the Beatles truly became the Beatles, they will will all be astonished by it. Ken, it's a pleasure. Uh, great stories. People are going to love reading this book. Thanks, Thanks for spending so some time with us. We appreciate it. This is the first book in the series entitled Maximum Volume: The Life of Beatles Producer. George Martin, The Early Years. The second volume, Sound Pictures, The Life of Beatles producer George Martin, The Later Years, 1966-2016, forthcoming in 2018.